Bye. Hey, you baby. Oh, no. She was always adamant that she were going to go to this school. It used to be a joke. Every time we passed it on a bus, she'd say, I'm going to go to that school. And I used to laugh. And I always kept saying on the bus, I'm going to go there, I'm going to go there. And mum kept saying, you're not going to get there because it's for rich children. And I kept saying, it's not fair. And I remember mum just told me to shut up because I was annoying her. It's not for likes of us, I said. <laughs> it's for people who've got a lot of money. You're going to have to go to school around here. You know, to high school, same as everybody else. If you're clever, you'll get on whichever school you go to. That was something I had to learn, didn't I, when he started well, this school? I've never done a tie before. I didn't tell my mum this, but I found out the website. I went online and it said, click on here and you can apply for all the exam. Mm. And so on the 26th of January, I said to my mum, Mum, I can't go to school tomorrow. She went, why, you got PE? I didn't tell I'm like, yeah, but I got an exam at the grammar school and she didn't believe me. I remember she was just laughing her head off. I'll let you out because I've got to turn the light off. To be honest, I didn't think she'd get in, which sounds awful, really. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew she were clever and that, but I, I, I didn't think she stood a chance because she'd never done an exam or anything in her school. The day of the exam, it took us ages to get up there and um, on two buses to get up there, and I were really bad with my asthma. And you go down this long, beautifully landscaped gardens, absolutely wonderful. You know, from somebody who lives around here where anything that's public space has got syringes, broken glass and burnt out stuff. To, to have that round your school is absolutely fantastic. You know, seeing rabbits and um, birds, you know, wildlife. It, and it's out in the middle of nowhere, so it's a lot fresher air than here. Um, I thought it were absolutely wonderful, but I did feel really intimidated because it's a long walk and it didn't help, you know, I'm there with inhaler and they're all passing us by in very, very large cars. A couple of weeks later, you, I got through, so then I ended up in interviews and finally we got in and ever since then it's been like a dream. I am fully supportive of her in the school, but as, as a sort of a working class girl, I do think it's really unfair that not only Neve, but there were other children in her school, in her primary school that were bright, and it seems a shame that they're not having those facilities. When we found out that she'd got um, a bursary as such, it pays her school fees up till 18, depending, she's got to keep up her grades and obviously her behaviour in school. Apparently, to get into Oxford, which I've always really wanted to go, you had to do Latin. I never realised we did Latin. I was happy because you could get a really good job. Then I could get out of this area and get my mum a nice granny flat somewhere. She doesn't know about a granny flat yet, but I'm going to get her one. When we knew she were, she'd got a, a bursary, it didn't include a school uniform or anything. And so a school uniform just come short of a thousand pound. Um, a PE kit were very expensive because I had to buy skirts, shirts, cycle shorts, swimming kit, um, sw swimming hat, swimming costume. She had to buy a, a lab coat for science and even special aprons for, for food technology, she calls it. And, and then a bus pass. Um, she can't go on the local buses, it's a set coach that takes them to school and that works out at just over a thousand pound a year. I put some jewellery in pawn shop, which I've lost, and um, I put everything that I'd remaining from my grandma um, went in pawn shop and then rest of it were loan sharks. And if you borrowed 250 pound in total, you paid just over 1,000, I think it 1,200 back, which I know I sound really stupid, doing that and it is a stupid thing to do and I am you know I am aware that that's high interest rate but the fact is when you're desperate and you need that money there and then to get a bus pass you're going to borrow it and I really don't want to get back out get another loan with a loan shark so my pride and joy merely for full shit it's going to break me out is this I'm going to have to sell it yeah that one's going to have to go I'm running out of things to sell really pawn shops are booming especially in Leeds. 
I can't really see a way out. I think when people have this image of um, people on benefits or whatever, they've got this image that everybody's having fun, but the reality of it is, is it's, it's, it's a damn struggle. And, you know, I don't want to be in this situation. I want to work. And um, I want to get my epilepsy under control and I want to have a job because that is the only way I can see out of this situation. My daughter sees a way out of it. She's going to go to university and she's going to have a good job. I think the only good thing to come out of my situation is it's an incentive for my daughter not to end up the same. Well, such stuff in here has um, been given, you know, or I've got out of skips, I've got the sofas out of skips. Made my own curtains and um, tablecloth and cushions and dog beds. <laughs> Make them myself. It's definitely a female room. I, don't, I can't see a bloke living in here. <laughs> the houses, in all honesty, could be really lovely. People who've bought them have made them really nice. It's just that there's a lot needs doing to them. <laughs> what? I mean, there's absolutely nothing around here. There's no banks, no sports centre anymore. There's no library. Um, it's just a dead area. But I've noticed other side of Leeds, like where her school is, they don't shut things down. You go up, up all Woodley Way and Moortown and all that way, and even Eddingley, their facilities are open, the libraries are open, they've got the sports centres. And these are people who've got money who can afford to go to private gyms and stuff like that. Now, whether they take more notice of them, maybe they've got more clout or they're more educated and can put it down better on paper, I don't know, but they take notice of them. When they put a protest about closing the school down, the take notice of them when we protest round here, we're just ignored. You know, it really annoys me because you're totally powerless. Mm -hmm. And you can see why people then turn to drink or drugs because you think, well, bollocks to them. <laughs> well, I know I shouldn't have said that, but well, that's, what, that's how you feel. That's, that's exactly how you feel about it. Because we can't really afford a proper laptop and my friend Zoe, this is hers, but we just took it in turns but she I have to pay her in chocolate. I have to pay her and sometimes I have to be a personal slave for the day or something. But it works that she doesn't always need it, so whenever she doesn't need it I have it, but I must have it every other week. But it's hard because when she's on the laptop I always have homework or has to be done online. But we always figure like an agreement. We have like a rotor, which is good. I haven't got anything really smart to wear up there, so you feel a bit out of it. So I've got remnants off at market, well, and I'm, I'm making a, a suit so I can look smart for her school. <laughs> I'm covering, I know I was on my I'm covering my tattoos up, I'm brushing my yes, hair as well. <laughs> I don't think that any of them sort of like deliberately go out of the way to make me feel like that, it's just me. But yeah, I do feel yeah, self-conscious. A of my accent, because I'm the only one, or it seems to be, I'm the only one with the Yorkshire accent. Um, even though the school's in Yorkshire. Um, they all sound the same, they've all got the same accent, so I do feel self-conscious and I don't really have clothes to dress up and go in, so it's quite intimidating, really. <laughs> but yeah, she does keep going on about her not showing her up at school and stuff like that. But I've told her she keeps nattering me, I'm going to knit her jumpers. <laughs> and she hates homemade knitting her jumpers, so I'm going to knit her loads of jumpers and she's going to have to wear them to school discos or social events, whatever you have. Is it balls you have? I'll knit you a ball gown, Neve. <laughs> But, um, my teachers are lovely. I mean, all the staff there are nice, and other parents I've met have been really nice. It's, it's. I don't think they realise how hard it is for somebody 
to go in that school if you don't feel like you, you don't belong. I think the hardest thing is when all parents go, oh, did you go to so-and-so school? And they're all like private schools, you know. Um, one of my friends said you should lie and say you went to a finishing school in Switzerland or something. <laughs> I don't think I could pull that off. <laughs> Yeah. No. no, I don't hate him. No, I don't. No, you're wrong. I might have done until you went there, but I don't now. Yeah, the one used to like, oh. Well, I did, yeah, but it's, it's, it's again, yeah, isn't it? It's, too much money. <laughs> it's unknown, isn't it? I mean, well, these barriers should be broke down, and then I wouldn't have such a bigoted viewpoint, and they probably wouldn't have such a viewpoint either. I think, in a way, your school don't not your school in particular but there's a way the system is these barriers aren't getting broke down because you know we're we're shoved in one area of Leeds and we're all poor together and they're at one end of Leeds where they're all rich together so I think there should be more mixing at boundaries and a pair of us would have better viewpoints of each other you know I won't be so chip on my shoulder against them and they probably won't think oh my god I'm having to mix with them what <laughs> I'd like to be Prime Minister, I don't know why, but I always want to be a dream because, like, I like to change things in the country because I don't think it's good. Oh dear. It's exploded on my finger. I'm gonna ban if I become Prime Minister, I'm banning fountain pens. That's how I feel about them. Oh. A good effort. Well, my family, they've all worked. You know, they all worked in either engineering or down pit or in tailoring. Um, so I've been brought up to a family that I've always grafted. And in a way, I've made the country great. But I'm very proud of them because they're hard-working people. So I don't want Neve when she's going on this, if somebody hasn't got a Jack Wills outfit or, or a don't go to a private education, then they're worthless. I want her to be proud of where she comes from. I don't want her to forget all that. You know, it's important. And I keep reminding her how hard-working class I've had it and still having it, in fact, even more so recently. And I don't want to forget her roots. <laughs> so as a result, I drag her round any social museum and show her where we come from, from back to back, and kids shoved in factories and up chimneys <laughs> and down pits, do you know what I mean? So that you can go to your school. <laughs> you know, it won't be that long ago that you'd have been in a factory. <laughs>